It's high time we reached for the stars and in today's show our experts are going to tell you who their favourite big men in the competition are. Hello and welcome to Fox Sports Lab NBA, I'm your host Ben Dixon and riding shotgun our guru as always James Clements, welcome James. Thanks Ben, I'm like a donut on top of a hill. <laughs> Ready to roll. You ready to roll, that's for sure. Coming up, James gets inside the Lakers turnaround. Our two-time All-Star Carlos Boozer will name the best big man in the NBA. And we tip all the winners in a huge weekend of games. Last week, we asked if the Lakers still had a heartbeat. And James, who were we to doubt them? Let's be honest. Anthony Davis and LeBron James have helped jumpstart the LA powerhouse. They had a massive 84 points against the Wizards on Monday. Now, James. Did we underestimate them in our pick a pair challenge last week? Did we, Dicko? You better believe it. We really did. But this <laughs> is the thing. Anthony Davis last week was only halfway through this insane run at the moment that he's on. Uh, and LeBron James is still LeBron James sometimes. That's what happens when you get as old as he is. Uh, you know, I groan when I get off the couch. He's still out there playing, you know, <laughs> at an incredible level in the NBA. But 55 for AD in that one, 29 for LeBron. Dicko, that's the highest pair of scores all uh, pair has scored all season. Like they're absolutely crushing at the moment. It's basically like they took that two on two NBA jam debate personally. They watched this show, went, hang on a second, we'll show them. But really, it's all about Anthony Davis turning back into a basketball playing pterodactyl. Like he's got all the tools to be an absolute MVP, game in, game out, and when he's healthy, that's exactly what he can do. He's back up to like 59% from the floor. He's averaging 27, 12, 2.3 blocks. He's tearing it up. And look, he's turned this Lakers team around. Can, can you pinpoint the turnaround? Like, it, it, it's not something you can actually put your finger on, or is our expert in you, James, he gonna tell us why? Well, it's obviously Anthony Davis is the exact reason. Basically, he's playing center. There's a little bit of a reason there for you, Dicko. He's just gone, right, cool. I'm not gonna pussyfoot around it. The Lakers, I think smartly, didn't bring back like a big guy to sort of give him like the uh, security blanket of like, oh, it's okay, we've got Dwight Howard, we've got JaVel McGee, we've got another big guy. It's like, no, nah, Anthony, you're the big guy. Go out there and play like a big guy. And he is. <laughs> It's incredible, it's amazing. He's changed his shot profile, he's playing much closer to the basket, makes him much more efficient, and makes this Laker team look incredible because suddenly they can find shooters, play inside out, ADs, rebounding, blocking shots, playing defense at an incredible level. But thing is, this is what happens. Like all season, their inability to shoot has been probably their biggest problem. It's sort of coalescing a little bit more. Russell Westbrook is looking much better off the bench and really, You've still got LeBron James, mm. one of the, what, two greatest players of all time, simple as that. But really, defensively, the Lakers as well, that's helped their sort of turn around. They've been pretty good, they've been surprisingly good all season. But even though I think they're in the sort of bottom 10 in like points per game that they're giving up, their defensive efficiency is actually top 10-ish. And they're keeping teams sort of in front of them and they're knocking them over with AD, LeBron and Rusty. But seriously, it all comes down to Anthony Davis playing like the MVP that we know he can be and staying healthy and not getting sick like he did this week as well, just to put a complete pin in that awesome run of his. But there you go, he stays healthy, they stay awesome. You heard it first, uh, he stays healthy, they go awesome. Let's stay in the West. Now, Pelican sitting pretty in second. With a fit roster, do you see him going deep in the playoffs? That's the key word there, Dicko, fit. And I love how this uh, roster has been constructed because there's malleability, there's big and small wings. Not only that, there's big and small <laughs> bigs. <laughs> Go figure. But this is how it happens and this is how it works with this awesome weird Pelicans team. Because you talk about f with a fit roster, they've been dealing with injuries all season already, Dicko. And the way that they've been able to sort of mix and match game to game, like if this team actually gets fully healthy, like they're terrifying. They've still got the third best defense, Dicko. And they haven't had their best five players on the court basically all season. When they have all five of those dudes healthy, they turn into a whirling death machine. I love the Pelicans. All right, now Zion Spark, where's it come from? He put 25 points against Jokic's Denver on Monday and another 30 he put away on the Spurs on Saturday. What has happened? The big rig. The big I'll rig. tell you what, what's happened, he's gotten healthy as well. This is the same sort of conversation we just had with Anthony Davis. Um, but really, it's health and it's just like his uh, off-season diet. Comfort. Uh, but still, <laughs> the entire vibe behind Zion is get him healthy, let him have the ball, let him do his thing. There was a stretch there, he's averaging 26, nine and five, absolutely ripping it up. The big, look, do you want to stand in front of him, Dicko? No nope. chance, nobody wants to play defense against him. But the thing is, they've outscored him in this little run lately, 70, by 77 points, they've outscored the opposition while he's been on the floor. They've been outscored, I think, by 22 when he's been sitting, which is incredible. But the key element of that is, 
defense. D. So there was a stretch there for six games where he had pretty much the most amount of blocks and steals that he's had in his entire NBA career so far. No coincidence, they won five of those six games. That's what it all comes down to for Zion. If he's up and about on defense, putting that huge big body of his out there, getting amongst it, blocking shots, just ruining people's lives, the Pelicans are horrifyingly dangerous. And that's where that's come from. Oh, amazing. Bit of D and that's what happens to turn around. All right, Aussie watch time. And we have to talk about our man, Matthew Delavadova and his Sacramento Kings. All right, firstly to the Kings. Are they rolling with the best offences in the league right now? Can we, can we fire the laser? Yes. Fire the laser. Fire Bang. the beam. I love this Sacramento Kings team, Dicko, because they're fun and their fans are absolutely amazing because they've basically turned the idea of every time the Kings win a game, they press a button. It fires a laser into the sky. And this has now turned into basically a place of worship. You can look it up on Google Maps. But still, <laughs> seriously, they fire that laser. They're averaging about 119 points per game. The drop off has actually come, Dicko, but they're still the second best, highest scoring offense in the league right now. And really, look, Matty Delavadova's on this team. We know that. I love this. But seriously, this is putting an adult with the kids. And this entire team has really responded to having their new coach, Mike Brown, having vets like Daly on the bench, stuff like that. And really, it's literally kids who have been just turned adults who have not seen this Sacramento Kings team ever be good. Seriously, this ever. is their best start in 18 years, Dicko. There's That's literally incredible. kids who are now adults who have not seen the Kings being this good their entire life, which is really cool. They're shooting a top seven amount of threes uh, they're hitting at a top 10 rate. They're absolutely crushing at the moment. But what I love about the way they go about it, they dominate in the paint. 65% from inside, basically 10 feet. So you've got the big Suvlaki King, as we call him here. The Demata Sabonis Suvlaki King. I love him. But he can dominate inside. They spread it out to the shooters. You've got dudes like Darren Fox driving. You've got Malik Monk shooting from the outside. The weirdest part is their shot profile is incredible at the top, incredible in the middle. On the wings where the three point line is actually closer, they're not shooting that well. It's, it's like, but that's an easier shot. So I think they can actually see even more of an uptick in this offense, sticker. Well, it's a good point you make. So Delhi's not having a huge impact, but you can see he, bring, he brings a benefit to the Kings, doesn't he? Steady, old, wise heads. It's what it's like all that. about. They brought in Mike Brown to be their coach to basically instill a bit of discipline on that team. Uh, they bring in Delhi off the bench. He's averaging, you know, the greatest 1.4 points you'll see in a game, in a uh, season, though, I'll tell you that much. He's gotten out there for nine games. He's the breaking case of emergency backup point guard. He's been broken out a couple of times. But really, his role is just to be a coach on the bench. He's seen it all. He's done it all. He's won a title. He's gone out there basically uh, trying to help mould this really, really young Sacramento team. And they've responded so well. As I've said, their best start in 18 years it's not just because of Delhi, but it's just because of the vibes that he brings. That heart, that grit, that, you know, the grit you get from the main streets of Maryborough, <laughs> that you get from being a ruck rover in and under packs in the AFL. But really, veterans like that, you can't underestimate their impact. It's like reasons why Udonis Haslam in Miami still has a job there, why Taj Gibson, Andre Iguodala, George Hill, those sorts of guys are still around. They've won titles, they've seen it all. Dell is the exact same and the Kings are responding. I love it. Yeah, well, we give the Aussies plenty of love on this show. Let's hope Dell can inspire the Kings to bigger and better things this year. The betting brand for sports fans. That's better. Gamble responsibly. They're the big guys who make the big plays, and guess what? They're on the big bucks. So who is the best in the land of the Giants? Let's welcome Carlos Boozer to the show to find out. Welcome, Carlos. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, it's great to have you on the show. They're big in stature and big in output. We're talking Zion Williamson, Nikola Jokic, Joel Embiid, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo, DeAndre Ayton, KAT, Triple J, Evan Mobley and Miles Turner, just to name a few, Carlos. But out of that big lineup, who are you taking and why? Oh, wow. So many talented guys, man. So many different skill sets. I'm going to pick the guy that has them all. I, I got Nikola Jokic. He can do everything. Best passing big man in the game since I don't even know who, maybe Roddy Divac back in the day. Uh, the best shooting big man out of all, all those guys as well. Does a great job of, of getting buckets in the paint, outside the paint, draws double teams, makes his free throws. Just a complete player at 6'11", can do everything that you would want your big man to do. He's also a good defender. 
takes on challenges, great leader for his Denver Nuggets. I'm taking the Joker. I like that now. I went through them and you were ticking them as I was going. Did I miss anyone? <laughs> Are you picking out of this lineup? I absolutely love this list and I love that Carlos went with the Joker because he is the complete package as he hit him, right? Like, but my favourite aspect of this is the simple idea that Joker makes his teammates better as well. Like, it's not just about him. He can set everybody else up. He averages a 23, 10 and 9. He's averaging, what, 64% from the floor. The dude, as Carlos said, can shoot threes. He's hitting free throws at 80%. Like, literally, you can trust him. Like, that's a huge aspect for this sort of stuff. You can go to him at the end of games. He's always going to make the right play. But I want to know, Carlos, out of all the big men you played with, who was the best one? Oh, it was Shaq, man. There was no question. Shaq <laughs> was unstoppable. It didn't matter what we did. Double team, triple team. It, it You could foul them and you foul out, but then you hurt your team because now you're not in the game anymore. So even the hack shack didn't really work against him because he fouled your best big guys out the game. And now you're less, you know, you're thinner on the front line. Shaq to me is my favorite big man of all time. Obviously I wasn't around to watch Kareem and, and Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell, but um, Shaq was just charismatic, looked like a fun teammate to have. He's a guy that I wish I could have went back in my career and played with. So dominant, made the game so easy for the rest of his teammates. Obviously won a ton of championships and all of that, but um, just a dominant force. I love it. What about Joachim Noah? Like, did he help, uh, you know, passing out of the post, stuff like that? Mimo Okur, you played with him as well, didn't you? Yeah, both those guys were great teammates, man. Terrific ball players. I mean, Memo. Mehmet Okur was one of the best shooters in the game of basketball, and he was our center. He was seven feet, so he created space to allow me and Darren Williams to kind of do our thing and just go in the paint, do our pick and roll thing while he knocked down threes. Flip side to Joakim Noah, completely different center. Dominant, rugged, rebound machine, could defend anybody from point guard to center. That's why he won Defensive Player of the Year one year. Terrific basketball, like IQ, smart, great passer. Wasn't necessarily the best score, but did everything else you want, you know, a, a, a guy to do. Did all the dirty work, didn't care who got the, the publicity, just wanted to win. Uh, two great players and just had different styles of play. I love it, Carlos. Uh, every week, he's got a man crush on you. He's been wanting to ask you question after question. <laughs> We've only got you for limited time, but let's get back to the big men. So out of that lineup, who's going to have the biggest impact on their team for the rest of the season? That's a great question. I think there's, I mean, obviously, if, if all things are equal and everybody's healthy and playing, you know, injury free, uh, obviously, Anthony Davis had a little bit of a flu um, the other night, but uh, in Cleveland, but if everybody's healthy, I, I think Joel Embiid may have the biggest impact. I mean, there's so much on this guy's shoulders. I think he goes into the into the season with a huge chip on his shoulder. He thought he should have won the MVP last year. <laughs> Didn't get it. Philly fans are rugged. They want you to win now. They don't want to wait till. Listen, it was all you know. Trust the process. Well, the process is here. They want to. They want to win some, some ball games, some playoff games. Maybe hold a banner up and win a championship. So, Joel Embiid definitely has the skill set. I'm looking forward to what he does in the postseason. But if he can stay healthy, he could, he could have the biggest impact. All right. Who has the biggest impact for you? So, this is a great question, Dicko, because you've got Embiid and Anthony Davis. I think those are the two answers to this one. Who has the biggest impact? Because we've seen Joker supporting cast. Look, they're really good anyway. You've got Embiid with that supporting cast, which is really handy as well. You've still got James Harden, you've got Tyrese Maxey, you've got a bunch of dudes who can really, you know, shoot the ball, score, play defense. They're built around Embiid. But the Lakers, without Anthony Davis, are just cooked. Like, we've seen that. Like, if he's not playing at his absolute best, they've got no chance this season. Where Embiid, look, I think he's the guy who can put a team over the top. We haven't seen anyone as dominant as him basically since Shaq, as uh, Carlos just mentioned. But he and AD are right there in terms of like the point differential when they're on and off the court. But AD just has this raw ability defensively as well to completely change the face of a game. Um, and I think he's almost more important to that Lakers team at the moment than even Embiid is. Like, Embiid is irreplaceable, but Anthony Davis, we've seen in the last couple of weeks, right, when he goes on these tears, the Lakers turn into a completely different team. So I think the way this question is sort of set up, who's going to have the biggest impact for their team of the season, I'd have to go with Anthony Davis. Oh, I like it. You two are on fire. Don't go anywhere because it's time for Carlos and James to go head-to-head -to -head in the big call. The betting brand for sports fans.
That's better. Gamble responsibly. Another huge weekend of games and we've got Carlos Boozer and James Clements here to make the big calls for you. Firstly, Carlos, oh, we're keen to hear your thoughts on the Lakers' form reversal and can they do it against Joel Embiid 76ers on Saturday? Yeah, they need to. I mean, they've been hot of late. They've won eight out of 11 games, which is terrific. I got to see them continue to do it against playoff competition. Anthony Davis, as you guys heard James earlier, has been on fire, playing like the old AD that made us all fall in love with him when he first got drafted number one overall. He's been on a tear. LeBron is back healthy, doing what he does, consistently great all the time. If they can do that against the Philadelphia Sixers, against a little bit closer to being a 500 team, they're right there. So I'm hoping they can take their their Laker their, their show Lakers into Philly and get a win. You agree? I'm going to go with the Sixers in this one, I think, Dicko. I think the Sixers' defense is just absolutely fired up at the moment. They've been on an absolute tear over the last couple of weeks. A lot of it's obviously trying to mix and match with Embiid coming back, but he's really kicked it up a notch. Now that James Harden is actually back, I'm fascinated to see how that works because Embiid really stepped up in his absence, right? Defensively, like the blocks were coming just thick and fast all of a sudden. But I think that Sixers' backcourt defensively might be a bit suspect, but I kind of feel like the Sixers might have the Lakers number in that one. All right, I'm going to stick with you, James, on this one. We've talked up Zion and the Pelicans. Now, are they up to the challenge at home against the Suns? How good is this game? I cannot wait. Pelicans, Suns, sign me up. It's a top of the West clash. But the thing is, I feel like the Pelicans are perfectly set up right now okay. to beat this Suns team because we talked about this last week, Dicko. They have a massive run all the way through December where they've got some huge challenges. The Suns are the first of them. And I feel like the Pelicans, the way they're playing at the moment, with that sort of combo of putting the ball back into Zion Williamson's hand, just letting him do his thing, getting the big rig out there, going hammer and tongs, away we go. I think the malleability on the perimeter as well for the Pelicans really just makes it a little bit easier for them to sort of combat what the Suns can do. They can throw a lot at Devin Booker. Devin Booker sort of twisted his ankle earlier in the week. Maybe that's still lingering. I just like the Pelicans. It's just, it's such a hard matchup for any team. As good as the Suns are, going to go the Pelicans. All right, Carlos, he's going with the Pelicans. You Pelicans or the Suns? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going there too. I think the Pelicans get this one. I think they're they're playing terrific basketball. Zion has been a monster since he's been back off that injury. They put the ball in his hand, let him create, let him get to the free throw line. He gets them in the bonus earlier, so the whole team is is, is shooting more free throws. Also, want to see Bi Brandon Ingram get busy. I like this matchup for them. I don't know something about the Suns. They don't have the same edge that they had a year ago. They're losing some games that I thought they should win. So I'm leaning towards the Pelicans as well. Let's move to the Sunday action, and we've got the mega playoff rematch. Carlos, love this one. Uh, can the Celtics exact some revenge against the Warriors? I think the Celtics get them in this one. Jason Tatum's playing like an MVP candidate. Jalen Brown's been terrific. They're getting healthier. They're going to get Robert uh, Williams back very soon. I like the Celtics to get it done, even though I still feel like Steph Curry is just, he just, I mean, I don't know if that was a real video with him knocking down five full court shots. <laughs> or if that was doctored. There's a lot of good magic on the computer these days. But I can, I can also believe it. He's been so hot in the NBA right now. But I got the Celtics. Who wins the rematch? Uh, love a good finals rematch, Dicko. Always love a good finals rematch. Just, you know, sets the blood afire, doesn't it? Uh, this game is going to be an absolute belter. It's going to go over the points total, I can bet you that one. But the vibe of this is, I'm going to go the Warriors. I feel like just the way that they're playing at the moment. The Celtics, look, love them. That wing duo of Brown and Tatum, as we've discussed, absolutely incredible, but there's just something about this Warriors championship swagger. They're gonna look at this game and go, they'll have that circled on the calendar. They'll be like, yep, finals rematch. We'll just, we'll just remind them who actually won that series <laughs> and the Warriors are gonna come out and win that. Oh, I love it. All right, now we're gonna finish on the Clippers and the Wizards. James, who wins? This is fascinating. You've got the extreme Zinger meal over there, Kustap Paul Zingas. Do you reckon he's supercharged? I love this idea of the uh, Zinger and the Clippers. But the Clippers, they've gotten Paul George sort of, you know, getting a healthier. They've had Kawhi come back. He hits a game winner this week, Dicko. Uh, you know, the weird little put back um, layup that he got to get them tied back up and then hits the nice little mid-ranger to win the game. But I kind of like the way the Wizards have been playing because the unpredictable nature of what they do. Game in, game out. You don't know what's going to happen. The Clippers, you feel like they should have a bit of that sort of 
uh, no substantial predictability about them because they've got a deep veteran roster. I just like the Wizards. I think Ooh. Beal is probably out for this, but just watch Zinger. Just see Evita Zubac on the other side of the, uh, of the court up against him for the Clippers. The Zinger will have a massive one. Kyle Kuzma will be fired up. I kind of think the Wizards pull off a bit of an upset. Okay. Well, you do look like a wizard with that big, long beard of yours. Who are you going with, Carlos? I got the Clippers, man. I think they're they're going to find a way to win this game. I think John Wall has been revitalized coming off that bench, doing a great job with the bench mob for the Clippers. Um, I, I mean, obviously, Kawhi. If Kawhi's playing this when he sits some games, he plays some games, um, and that, depending on how you know PG's feeling. But I like this Clipper roster, man. They play good defense. They got shooters everywhere. I think they're able to, to, to beat the Wizards. I mean, uh, yeah, the Wizards. All right, Carlos, we love having you on your insights every week. Gets us up, and we're going to see you next week for our final show of the year, so thank you. Appreciate it, guys. James, before we let you go, you have a middle name, and it is Multi for a reason. Okay, for this weekend, what do you got for us? <laughs> Call me James Multi Clements, <laughs> Dicko. Uh, there are some really, really awesome matchups this weekend. I'm really excited to see Atlanta, Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn win that. We've got Cleveland playing the Kings. We've talked about Sacramento. Fire that laser. Not today. Cleveland win that. And Milwaukee at Dallas. You go Brooklyn, Cleveland, Milwaukee over Dallas. Sign me up. I love that. All right, thanks for joining us on Fox Sports Lab NBA. That's our penultimate show for the year. What's penultimate mean? Well, Pistons and Rockets fans should know. It means second last. Just a little dig there to go. Don't forget to subscribe below and follow us on socials. We'll see you next week.